welcome to the ultimate beginner's guide to Minecraft mods, where you will learn everything you need to know to go from beginner to expert at Minecraft modding. Mods are modifications to the original or vanilla game, which are written by independent developers, who usually offer them for free. If you know some coding, you can even write mods yourself. There are many different types of mods, and we're going to go through them all. Data packs for Java or behavior packs for Bedrock change the game without modifying any code directly. Behavior packs can change things like entity behaviors, loot drops, spawn rules, items, recipes, and trade tables. Data packs allow players to customize command functions, loot tables, world structures, advancements, recipes, and tags. They change different things for Java and Bedrock because both games are structured differently in the code, though they're both Minecraft on the surface. They can both be enabled on a world basis and are made with JSON files. The game is built to accept these. Here's the button on Java when you're creating your world, and here's the button when creating your world on Bedrock. There are two more types of mods called packs, resource packs, and texture packs. These are both called the same thing on both Java and Bedrock, but a pack designed for Java cannot be used interchangeably with Bedrock. These change how the game appears or sounds. The terms resource packs and texture packs are often used interchangeably, but texture packs only include visual changes, and resource packs can also include changes to audio too. And now for the mods that change the game the most. Grips for Bedrock or mods for Java. Grips for Bedrock are custom code written in JavaScript, not JSON files. So they can change more about how the game works than behavior packs or resource packs. I've so far used the word mods as an overarching term for anything that changes the game, but there is also a type of game changer for Java that is called mods specifically because they actually modify the code of the game itself allowing near-infinite customizability. To install Java mods, you will need your choice of the two base foundation mods which allow other mods to alter the game, Forge and Fabric. Mods have to be directly compatible or written for one of these base mods. There is also actually a third base mod, a newcomer, Quilt which is compatible with fabric mods, but also can have mods made directly for it only. I want to mention a specific type of Java mod, which is an optimization mod. Mods like Sodium, Lithium, and Starlight on Fabric, or Optifine on Forge, help the game run better without necessarily changing too much about how it works. They make the game's code more efficient, which results in better performance and more frames per second. Now let's talk about shaders. Shaders change how the game looks. For Bedrock, you can or used to be able to trickly code these into resource packs, but I've not found a single one that works with the latest version of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Though it's not a mod and is built in, I should mention here Minecraft RTX, which adds ray tracing, realistic light simulation, to Minecraft Bedrock Edition. It's in the options on some devices, and to work, it needs a custom resource pack like Kelly's RTX, which defines how light bounces off different surfaces. For Java Edition, resource packs can also kind of be used as hacks to make shaders. See, vanilla pudding tart. But there is also a very easy way to allow shaders in Minecraft Java, and that's with Optifine on Forge or Iris on Fabric. There are ports for both of these to the alternative base mods, but these ports are often less compatible with other mods. I already mentioned Optifine as an optimization mod, but it also works as a kind of base foundation mod to allow shaders. Iris does the same thing. With both of them, you just add shaders to the shaders folder in Minecraft and then enable them in the Optifine or Iris menu. To get the best visual experience, make sure your shader works with the resource packs you've chosen. There are multiple different types of resource packs. Lab PBR, Old PBR, and SUS PBR. PBR here stands for Physically Based Rendering. There's also Integrated PBR, which is when a shader doesn't use a specific resource pack you've chosen, but includes a sort of resource pack within it. To enable this, just look for it in your shader settings. On the site you download your resource pack, it should tell you what type it is. When a shader is working with a resource pack, they will work together like resource packs do with RTX on Bedrock. They can add more detail to blocks, make some blocks shiny and some blocks rough, and even add 3D effects. Unlike Bedrock RTX though, you can run shaders without a resource pack, and they will still work. Surfaces just won't always look as good. The best places to get Minecraft Bedrock mods are CurseForge, Planet Minecraft, and MCPEDL. And of course, there's the Minecraft Marketplace, which is integrated into Bedrock Edition. The best websites for Java mods are CurseForge, Modrinth, and Planet Minecraft. I highly recommend never downloading mods from other websites without researching and making sure they're safe. There's a lot of malware out there, as well as people copying other people's mods and uploading them without permission to steal their ad revenue. Here's how to install mods. From Minecraft Bedrock Edition mods that you download, all you have to do is double click and open them. Minecraft will automatically open and it will import the mod. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, resource packs can be linked directly to a world by going to resource packs when creating a world and then activating one, just like behavior packs. However, you can also go to settings, global resources, and then activate it on the global side. 
You can then go to any world and have that resource pack work with that world without having it be bound to the world. Unfortunately, you can't just change your resource packs in the settings like you can on Java. You'll have to quit the world, go to Settings, Global Resources, Deactivate, and then rejoin the world. The overarching term for mods for Bedrock Edition is add-ons. Add-ons often involve multiple combinations of behavior packs and resource packs all bundled together. They can also include a custom world. Add-ons called mashup packs often also combine resource packs with custom worlds. You'll often just see a button like Create This World. For Java Edition, you just have to open the Minecraft folder, and then drag mods to the mod folder, shaders to the shader folder, and resource packs to the resource pack folder. Data packs can be dragged into the Minecraft window when creating a world, or into the folder that opens when you press open folder. For a specific world, you can also go into your saves folder and into the world folder, and then there's a data pack folder that you can add data packs to if you've already created a world. For resource packs, you also need to make sure that you enable them in the game by moving them from the left of the resource pack screen to the right. I'll show you the easiest way to get to the Minecraft folder, depending on the launcher you use, in the launcher section. An important thing to keep in mind is making sure that you get the right mod for the version of Minecraft you are playing. Something else to watch out for when using multiple mods is compatibility. Since mods are written by different people, they often don't work well together, which can prevent the game from launching, or even cause crashes. If you have many mods installed, you might need to remove some until you find the one that's causing the crash. Looking at the console, logs, or crash reports can help, but they can be hard to read and sometimes don't tell you what mod is causing the issue. A good way to use many mods without having to worry about incompatibilities is mod packs, which combine many mods into one package that is pre-tested to make sure it works by the mod pack creator. I even have one myself called Genuine. Bedrock add-ons are often combined, but they aren't often called mod packs. Now let's talk about Java launchers. The one you almost definitely know about if you've ever played Minecraft before is the default Minecraft launcher. The default Minecraft launcher has four different tabs. These two are totally different games, so we're not going to talk about them here. Clicking this button will take you to Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and this button, of course, takes you to Minecraft Java Edition. This is where you select what installation you want to use. You might only have one at first, so to get a new one, click Installations and New Installation. Browsing here will let you set up a new place to put your Minecraft folder. You can leave your game directory on the default directory, and it will basically reinstall a different version of Minecraft, depending on what you have, into the same folder. But you won't be able to easily manage different mods other than manually taking them in and out of the mod folder. What I recommend is setting a new directory for every new instance you create. Put it somewhere easy to access, but you don't have to remember where the folder is, because if you ever forget, you can just press this folder button. It will take you to the Minecraft folder which has the mods, resource packs, and shader pack folders that you need to change your mods. However, if you want to use the same mods with every different installation, then you can just use the same directory. You can create new installations for every time you want to change between Forge, Fabric, or Quilt, or even different versions of Minecraft, like 1.19.2 instead of 1.19.4. This launcher is pretty darn good and I recommend using it if you don't know which launcher to use. But if you find yourself wanting some extra features, like automatic mod updates, or the ability to install an entire mod pack right from your launcher, then I recommend one of the third-party launchers, like AT Launcher. Please don't confuse this with T Launcher, which is a source of malware, but AT Launcher is an open-source Minecraft launcher, which is very easy to use. Press vanilla packs to create a new version of Minecraft. You can leave it on vanilla or install Fabric or Forge or Quilt. Press packs to create a new instance or new server of a Minecraft pack from CurseForge, Modern Technic, or AT Launcher itself. What I love about AT Launcher is that it makes it super easy to create new servers. Just press Create Server instead of Create Instance. Once you have an instance created, you'll find it in the Instances tab. You can just press Open Folder to manually edit the files if you want, or you can press Edit Mods, select your mods, and then press Check for Updates to check every single one for updates. By pressing Add Mods, you can also browse for mods on CurseForge and ModRenth right from the launcher. Another popular launcher is CurseForge. Make sure you have the Minecraft tab selected because CurseForge also handles other games. Then you can press Browse Mod Packs to look for mod packs, or you can press Create Custom Profile to create a custom instance in Forge, Fabric, or Vanilla. Once you have one created, you can click on it and then press these three dots and then open folder to open the folder manually. You can also press this little puzzle piece icon to look for new mods to add from CurseForge. Another good option is GD Launcher. In GD Launcher, just press this plus button to create a new custom instance. Under Vanilla, press Forge, Fabric, or Vanilla. Left click and press Open Folder to see the Minecraft folder so you can manually change things. Another popular option is the Prism Launcher. Just press Add Instance, then you can get a mod pack from Technic, Modern, FTB, 
Curse Forge, or the AT Launcher. Or you can create your own vanilla instance with Forge, Fabric, or Quilt. Left click, press Folder, and then click Minecraft to go to the Minecraft folder. Press Edit to bring up this interesting page which lets you view your mods, your shader packs, and your resource packs separately. For Multi-MC, just press Add Instance. You can select mod packs here, and you can also create your own instance under vanilla. Although you can't choose Forge or Fabric here, you can elsewhere. First create a vanilla instance, then left click and press Edit Instance. Unfortunately, they don't have a built-in search for mods included in Multi-MC. And that's it! Now you're an expert on Minecraft modding. Now go and enjoy some modding. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.